We just wrapped on season three, season four coming in hot, first week of June. So what can we expect with season four? It's all about becoming a strength coach. We get a lot of inbound requests on just the career side of it. And, you know, one thing I want to get across is, yeah, we're going to talk a lot about, you know, firsthand knowledge of becoming a strength conditioning coach. And that's something I've invested a lot of my personal time and effort into. But a lot of the stuff is going to be universal. It's not really like specific to strength conditioning in general. If you're an accountant, if you're a lawyer, you know, arguably, you know, maybe, maybe there's a little bit of taking some liberties, but uh, I think there's a lot of just, there's a lot of universality to your career and how you approach things, being intentional, going through the the struggle to get something that's very coveted and in very high demand and not a lot of spots, which, you know, the, the caveat to that different than something which like a doctor or a lawyer, they have a high earning potential or strength conditioning, generally speaking, doesn't. Right. So there's, um, there's more of a motivational aspect that we're going to dive into and stamina and perseverance and, you know, really diving into the underlying why you want to become a strength coach. So at a certain point, you know, the incentive becoming a strength coach is more of the purpose and meaning behind becoming a strength coach. And hopefully there's some monetary aspect of that as well, which, you know, we're not, we're not becoming a uh, priest and monks. You know, we do have things in our lives that we want and we want to, we have family members that we want to support and be a provider in some way. But the other notion is more of the reasons can be tied into this I really want to do this because it's my calling and it's my purpose. And I'm not saying doctors and lawyers aren't doing it for some sort of purpose, but it's kind of, it's kind of a different context when you get paid six, maybe seven figures, a much higher average salary for than a strength condition coach, which is still probably in the forties yeah. overall. And, and, you know, six figures is probably the average for some of those other professions, which arguably there's, it's a harder road to becoming a strength coach. And you know, that process. And that might actually be applicable for some trainers out there that are working in a private sector and looking across that threshold of, hey, I want, <clears throat> I want to work in the team sector, which, hey, this is going to be a good, good understanding of just what it takes, what you're up against, what you're going to get in an end result. So what kind of topics, kind of hit on them a little bit, but kind of give us the, the you know, it's 10 parts. So what, what are the 10 things we're going to talk about here? Yeah, I, so I break it up into... And I want to keep this simple and I want to keep this intuitive and I want people to walk away from this, not necessarily going, okay, I already know and understand that, but just getting to a very, very granular and specific thing that we can all understand as part of becoming a, any profession. But what do you want to be, right? That simple question of, I want to be a strength coach in the team sector working with this sport, you know, the more specific, the better. and breaking that down into, okay, well, what is your skill set now? And what are we competent in? What do we knowledge of? Or do we have the motivation or the, the ability to do that? And I think there's going to be a lot of aspects we'll talk about in terms of the how, but the next part is why. And when we talk about what, you know, one of the more important things to talk about after that is why do you want to do that? And there's got to be some sort of continuity between the two. I find most coaches struggle to connect their what and why, and I think that's why they falter out. You know, the, the statistic of most most people in the in the strength conditioning, the fitness, are probably not going to last more than three to five years in general. And I think it just comes into the the what, like, oh, it looks like a pretty good way to earn a paycheck, or it's a nice way to get me through to something else, or that's a hobby that I'll pursue for a period of time. And you know, then I got to come into the real world and, you know, do other things. That part, it's, it's pretty important to dial in the why and having a sense of continuity between the two, that they have to have some sort of connection. And if they don't, you're probably going to come up short. So if you don't have a very good why, you might just need to stop right there and, and evaluate that. And then what gives you purpose and meaning? And then we'll go into the how. And I break up the how into three criteria. Do you have the skill? You know, can you actually physically do the job? Do you have the knowledge? Do you know how to do the job? And the final part is the motivation. And you know, we'll break those up in each individual episode because I think they're important to talk about. And usually when someone doesn't reach a certain level professionally in strength and conditioning, it's probably one of those three really is the, the bottom line. And you know, skill, you know, just 
you know a good coach when you see it. You feel it. They have an impact. Their concentric circle is large. And those are the people that move up to head strength coach. Those are the people that are the 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 apex of our profession. And that's usually the most important, right? When you're on the floor, is it undeniable that you are in charge? Uh, and I think certain people have that. Certain people resonate with that. Certain people really like that. And there's other people that don't. And there's other people that maybe say outwardly, like, I want to move up. I want to be a head strength coach. or I want to be at the tip of the spear but don't have that presence on the floor, maybe their body language or their subconscious is telling them something different than what their actual conscious is. And I, I think that part is important to break down. The knowledge, I have seen a lot of people who are really good on the floor, but maybe downplay the significance of that. And, you know, the areas of, okay, well, if you're not the most charismatic, compelling, really, really authoritative figure on the floor, you know, what are you behind the scenes? Are you the, you know, savant behind all of that stuff making it work? Are you the mad scientist? Are you the person that's extremely knowledgeable on program design, program design, speed development, return to play, nutrition, sports science, you know, all these domains within strength conditioning that you can kind of like really niche yourself into and become an expert on, you know, it's great when you can have both, but the other note, it's, you know, one One's probably going to help you a lot more and two will help you even more. And then we'll get into the final aspect of motivation, which it's just about stamina, perseverance, really understanding the, the job is really hard. And the people that typically don't get what they want are one, they're not very good at it. They don't really know a whole lot about what they're doing as well as they probably don't have the ability to push through when others will. And you know, anyone could be good in June working with the football off season. Not many could be good in July. You know, when we get to in season and you're two and 10, you know, what's your, what's your actual body language saying? What's your mindset? Because you have to be the optimist in the room. Like you're the person that committed to, you can change the course of your career and performance by working hard and dedicating yourself and having really good training and programming and coaching and all those things. You have to embody that and live that. And Unfortunately, you have to be the person that has to compartmentalize everything else, all the stuff going on outside. Because I'll be, I'll be honest. I think most people don't really understand uh, the hardships that strength coaches have to be in terms of this living embodiment of positivity and growth. And their lives are like everyone else's. They have relationships. They have stressors. They have to get their oil changed. They have to do all these things, but they have to almost attach from that as weighing them down or burdensome and have to put this like over the top archetype or presentation of themselves that never has a problem and is always, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed. And I think that weighs on people. And large part too is, I think this is something psychologically, usually the, the archetype that gets re resonates with strength conditioning is a person that really does well with personal development and is intrinsically motivated. That doesn't necessarily parlay itself to being extroverted and prioritizing others. And there's a, there's a process psychologically to work through and understand that your problems are now secondary to others. And it takes some time and adjustment. And, you know, one of the things that we go through a lot with our staff is if they were good at what we are, they wouldn't need us. Right. right. They could work out and they could consistently do that and make good choices from a lifestyle and nutrition standpoint chances are they wouldn't have to pay us. And that becomes kind of the catch 22 of it all that the people that can don't need you uh, or don't need you to the much that you think you need you. And then you have to, with those folks of like the folks that don't really need you, you may need to wear other hats being more personable or prioritizing them and being their cheerleader. And, you know, I think that's where a lot of, you know, the, the knowledge archetype or the extreme, on the floor archetype or the person that's always super optimistic archetype struggles with is like, they're probably putting a ceiling on what they're going to be because of one aspect of not being where it's at. So we'll break all those things down and how, and then we'll get into some other like key topics that I think are relevant for one strength and conditioning, but two, probably any facet of professional life, but the, the navigating the workplace and working yeah. well with others and, you know, the ego, the, the politics, the bureaucracy, the, the interaction with others that we're relying on each other, playing the short game, the long game. And then we'll go through how to, to upward mobility and, you know, how to be promoted within an apartment or 
get a, a better opportunity for the future. And then the final aspect will be, okay, when is a job no longer good for you? Like whether it's a personal or a financial or it's a actual performance thing, like those are all things that we have to evaluate and we'll go through all that. So the end of like a 10 part series or season will be, all right, a pretty good indication of just how to navigate your career professionally and and thinking about all this stuff because those are usually the questions that get the most and it could be centered off of like personal success or the basically just gave you a, a full-on insight in terms of i'm giving you the best version of myself but don't forget i'm human and i got problems and you know i work Real through this stuff too and you know like it's i'm not trying to be vulnerable because i don't really care about that like i that's one thing that like for me as i you start to get to know me and really understand that it's like i i don't i don't really do well with like lingering problems and holding on to things like, all right, you know, like get busy living, you know, like Andy Dufresne said it best. And, and I'm not saying that's the end all be all. And that's the only way to work, only way to live. Cause there's plenty of other people who are wildly successful or good about talking about it. I just choose not to. And I think that's hopefully going to come across of, uh, this is, this is kind of my take on how I became successful and how I helped a lot of other coaches become successful. But by all means, there's, there's plenty of other ways to do it and thinking about the long term of that might have been conditionally successful. And like as we know with anything, complex multivariate environments with the aspect of physiology is really, really hard to manage. Now add in psychology. And then that's a very situational dependent moment and feeling and that changes. And like as soon as we get off this call, it'll be different five minutes from now. Uh, right. We might have a different incentive structure or different motivation or a different rationale or might just feel burnt out or energized. Who knows? But that part, you know, that's my take in the moment and it'll be honest and transparent, but probably won't be a very empathetic or vulnerable conversation. But just understand that, you know, as you listen to this, that I'll be the other person on like, yeah, man, I'm struggling to take trash out or get my oil changed or do everything else. Yeah, yeah. I cannot do the dishes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but I think it'll be very cathartic in a lot of ways for myself and potentially a lot of our listeners. And I know there's a lot of people that I've mentored and coached and, you know, like yourself included. And, you know, probably be good to just have like, all right, give me a crash course on what I should be thinking about career wise and professional wise. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. A lot of good topics. Obviously, you have a huge coaching tree, huge concentric circle off of your impact. So a lot of great insights we're going to take away. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, man, me too. So we'll, we'll, kick, this, we'll kick the season off first week of June. So we'll, we'll have a lot of really cool things to talk about from June to the end of to middle of August. Take a little break and we'll get on to season five. But I'm looking forward to the season. I think it's going to be fun. I think so too. Appreciate you, Tim. Awesome.